welcome to another GCSE Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, from mrgoff.com. This video will focus on arrays and records. Arrays are a special type of data structure that allow us to group data items of the same data type under a single identifier. They're stored in contiguous memory locations. This just means locations one after the next. If you look at the example below, you can see how useful they can be rather than having to have 10 separate variables to score these high, store these high scores, you can have one single variable that stores all of them in a row. Individual items in an array are accessed using their index. Their index just means their numerical position within the array. In pseudocode and in many languages like Python, array indexing starts at zero. This can be seen in the example below where the indexes of the items in the array have been placed above them. If we executed the line output, the highest score belongs to high score zero, the actual output would be the highest score belongs to Bob because Bob is the name of the person in a high score position zero. This same method of accessing values can be used to assign new values to the items in the array. As you can see below, high scores with position seven means that we would like to change position seven from Manu to Dan, or in the second example, to whatever the user inputs. It is important to note that you can't simply declare high scores eight and assign a new value. This would create an error. In some cases, where an array is static, it cannot grow in size at all. However, with a dynamic array that is able to grow and shrink as necessary, you would be able to append a new value onto the end of the array. A two-dimensional array is an array of arrays. To access an element in a two-dimensional array, you will need to use two square boxes instead of one. The first relates to which array to look in, in our array of arrays. The second says what position to look in in that array. If we look at the example, the first square box would contain the number that determines which array to look in. The first array, array zero, is Bob's array of scores. In array one, we have Bill's scores. In array two, Jim's. Fred is in three, Tim is in four. The second box here refers to which game within that array are we looking at. If we look at the example here, games 1, 3, this refers to array 1, which is Bill's array, and position 3, which remembering indexing starts at 0, means it will be the fourth value, will be 5. We can use the same referencing method to assign new values to items in a two-dimensional array. You may be scratching your head a bit and thinking, Hang on, I thought I used arrays in Python, and not everything we've heard here today seems to add up to what I do there. The thing is, in Python, what we may have referred to as arrays are technically lists. You can use a Python list as an array, but they differ because Python lists are always dynamic. They can grow and shrink using the remove and append commands. Python lists can contain data of different data types. Technically, an array cannot do this. So this is where records come in. They're the data structure that can group data objects of different data types together that are related. For example, the data for a member of a tennis club. As we just heard, we could use a Python list to store a record. A more common practice is for a record to be stored on a text file with one record per line and the values separated by commas. This is known as comma separated values. As data storage needs become more complex, a database may become more effective than trying to use text files. You need to be able to interpret and write record structures in pseudocode like the one shown here. The idea is fairly simple. You start with record, you end with end record. All of the items you want in the record are indented and they come as pairs with the name of the item and the actual value to be stored. That's the end of our video on arrays and records. It can be a tricky topic that some students need to go back over a few times. 
I've been Mr. Goff for MrGoff.com. I hope you'll join me again soon for some more videos on programming techniques. Bye for now.